Hey everyone, it's Todd from Sideshow Effects once again, and really excited to introduce you to our newest addition to the library, DaVinci Resolve Pro Pack for Loop Deck. Now, Loop Deck has just recently released their new software that allows us to add our own custom icons. So this is going to really change how uh, we interact with the with the Loop Deck. And you should note that these that everything that I'm going to show you here applies to the Loop Deck CT as well as the Loop Deck Live. So the process is identical between the two, but obviously with Loop Deck CT, you uh, get the additional functions of the uh, buttons and the shuttle wheel that you don't get with the Live. But everything else in terms of how we install and how we work with the software and how we interact with the top part of the device is identical. And it's also identical whether you're on the Mac system or the Windows system. I'm, I'm on Mac right now but everything you see here is done the same way on Windows. So the first thing you want to do when you download the Pro Pack is you want to install the keyboard shortcuts. So on the, the download that you get here, uh, you can see the keyboard shortcuts folder and in there, depending on your operating system, is the file. So you want to go to DaVinci, go to your keyboard customization, and on the top right, you see a menu here and we have import preset and you'll navigate to that folder and that's where you will double click that to add that in and make sure it is live in your customization here and you'll you'll close that out go back to loop deck so that when we load the profile in it is going to speak to that particular shortcut file so importing the profile that comes with the package once again, the package has a folder in it called Loop Deck Profiles, depending on your operating system. We're on a Mac here, so we're going to import that one. And how we do that is in Loop Deck software itself, on the bottom left, there's a gear icon. We'll click on that. And under Profile, we're going to click on Import. Navigate to that file on your download folder. You import that. I've already imported it, so we won't do that. And then when we pull down our application, in this case it's DaVinci Resolve, and our profile is selected here under Profile, and we're fully loaded up. It's as simple as that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly go through and show you how the pages are built, and then afterwards I'm going to show you how to customize this profile to suit your own workflow. I'll show you how to apply different uh, buttons, how to apply your own custom icons, that sort of thing. So now with our DaVinci Resolve Pro Pack profile loaded, when we switch over to DaVinci, it automatically starts up on our device. And the main page of our profile shows the seven different rooms that are available in DaVinci Resolve. And clicking on each one of these will open the room as well as open the workspace for that room. So in the case of media, Click on Media, it opens up our media page in DaVinci and sends us to the workspace for the media page that we've built. Now I'm going to switch quickly back over to LoopTech software here to because I want to show you how this profile is actually built and you can see what is available just through the software itself. And one other thing I should mention is the interface here of LoopTech that I've been working with uh, is a beta version of the software, so yours might look slightly different. Perhaps you might even have the icons listed alongside here. I'm not sure, but I wanted to get this out to you so you knew what to expect, so you knew how to build things early. So on the on the right-hand side pane here, we have the different workspaces. These are the main pages that have been created. And of course, we're on main right now, as you can see. And we have a, an editing page, a fusion page, media management, color page, Fairlight, a deliver page and a cut page. Now, within each one of these, so if I click on editing, for example, and I click on our main button bar here, anywhere in the button bar area, it brings this forward. And you'll see along the bottom, it shows the different pages that have been created for each one of these. So you've got editing one, two, and three along the bottom here. Now, when we go to DaVinci, and let's go back to the main page, let's click on edit. That will open our edit room and take us to the edit workspace. Those different pages that you saw, the editing one, two, and three, can be accessed simply by swiping left or right across any of the touch buttons here. So swiping to the left, 
brings the next page, swipe into the left again, brings the third page, and you swipe once more to the left, it brings us back to page one. And also to help in the navigation, we have a back to main button that takes us back to our main page. In addition, if we wanted to, the workspace buttons here have also been programmed to jump us directly into those particular rooms. So two, for example, takes us into the media management room. Three will take us to the editing. Four takes us to fusion. Five to color. And six to Fairlight. So I'm going to go back to the media management page. Now you see also along the side, uh, these are what are called dial strips. And they correspond to the six different dials on the sides. So let's say we're in our media management page here. Let's select a clip. And we want to add some, uh, some flags to it. It's as simple as we can either press the dial itself or turn the dial. It has the same function. It will apply those particular colored flags. So if we press red, for example, we add a red flag. Turn for the green, we add a green flag. Press for blue, same thing. Now on the right hand side, you can see these are set clip color that are assigned to these dials on this side. And it's easier to see the, the clip colors if we jump over to an edit page here. So let's select this clip here. And I can change the color by once again pressing a key or turning a key, turning a key, pressing a key. And we can change the clip color on the fly like that. Now, just like we can swipe left and right on the main touch page, we can also swipe up and down on the dial strips to access additional menus. So if I swipe down here, we have another bank of uh, clip colors and flags. Once again, another and another, and then swipe again back to the first page. So there's four of those. Let's go back to the main page and let's go over to the color tab. And it opens our color room. Now our zoom will zoom in and out on the viewer. And pressing it will zoom to fit. The next dial down is uh, for grade versions. So on this clip, I do have some grade versions loaded. And I can turn the dial to swap between the different grade versions. And if I want to add a new version, I press the button. A color grading version is added. Let's just apply a different grade here. And now I have three grades that I can rotate through. The bottom keys allow us to scrub through either one frame at a time or one second at a time through our clips. On the right hand dial strip, we can rotate the top right dial to navigate to all the different nodes, left and right. As you can see, we're going backwards and forwards through the different nodes. The next dial down on the right, if we click on the timeline, it will take us from one clip to another. And back, of course. And just as in the other pages, if we swipe on the dial strips, we can access additional menus. So by swiping up, we now have printer light keys available to us. So let's turn on the video scopes. And by pressing on any one of these printer light dials, we'll activate and turn on printer light hotkeys. So we'll press that, and then we can select any one of these dials and adjust the printer light keys. And these are printer light full keys, full printer lights. And if we swipe up once more, we have quarter printer lights, allowing us to do more fine tune adjustments. And the color page can also navigate by swiping on the main touch buttons. Or you can actually navigate with menu buttons that are also located here. In addition, the shuttle wheel is also active for us. In the case of the color page, we have save memories. So you can save memory A and B and load A and B. If we switch back to the edit page, the shuttle wheel acts as a true shuttle. So we can scrub through, and of course back. And then if we swipe on the wheel as well, we can then turn this into a full shuttle. And swipe once more. We can 
shuttle between the edit points. So that's the main profile that has been built for you as a starting point. But in addition to all this, under custom actions on the left hand side pane here is an organized list of all of the commands that have been pre-programmed for you. And there's around 860 of them here. So for example, we're going to media management. There's all of these commands that have shortcuts already applied to them and icons applied to them. So anything you don't find here that you want to include in this profile, it's a very simple process of dragging and dropping to build your own profile. And you'll notice that in many of these menu items, there's a labeled and an unlabeled version. They're identical to each other. It's just that the icons won't have the heading under the icon itself. So quickly, I'll show you how to start building your own profile. Let's say we're in the editing page here. We want to add a new page to, guess, to start fresh. We we'll give it a name. We'll just call it temp for now. And we get 12 blank buttons. So let's go into, let's go into trim here. And we're just going to add the trim start key to that. And just by clicking and dragging, it applies it to the blank button here. And you'll see if we click on the gear icon here, it shows us uh, the shortcut that's been applied to it and the icon. So if we go over to DaVinci and we got a clip selected here and we've got our new page here and we select trim start and it performs the action for us. I'll undo that for now. Go back to loop deck. So you can see how you can quickly build your own modified profile by doing this. And you can go through all these menu items, select what you want, select nearest edit, nearest clip gap, extend the edit, etc., and keep adding pages. And it's as easy as just swiping between the pages. Now the package comes with 1300 icons and so obviously there's 860 that have been preloaded here. If you find there, there are some functions that you use that aren't included here, it's very easy to build those out as well. So you can either apply it to any of these pre-made menus or you can create your own menu. And I'll just create a new one here and call it temp. Save it and it appears here at the bottom. So now with our new folder here, we can click on the plus icon to add a new action in that folder. And we're going to, let's say, load in lock all video tracks. And that shortcut for our keyboard set is Option Shift 9. Say OK. Click on the plus icon here, and this will allow us to add in our own custom icon now. And we can either drag and drop onto this spot, or we can do Choose File and go to our download folder. Go to touch buttons, we'll make it a labeled and it'll be on black and we can just do the search here for lock. Here it is, lock unlock all video. And it applies it, we say save and save again. Now this has been loaded into our new menu and we can click and drag that onto our empty button, go over to DaVinci, and we can see on the left hand side our lock tracks. And by clicking the button, we lock the tracks. So as you can see, it's very, very quick to create your own with 860 of the main functions in DaVinci available to you and already pre-programmed. It's as simple as drag and drop, or you can quickly just build your own based on the 1300 icons that are already pre-made in the package. Now adding in a new command for the dial strips is a little bit different. So let's click on one of the dial strip buttons that opens up this menu. And we have a, uh, a few ex uh, empty keys here on, on this menu. We'll just use one of these just for demonstration. So at the bottom of the left-hand pane, we see rotation adjustments here. So this is where you enter in new actions that are specifically for the dials. 
So let's go down to custom adjustment and we can add in a new menu item here or we can just add to an existing one. We'll just add to the color one here. And let's give it a name, next node. And the shortcut action for this, depending on which direction we're turning the dial, if you want to go back one node, it is option shift semicolon in our case. Say okay, and going forward is option shift apostrophe. Say okay. And here we can also add in our icon. Click on that, choose the file, bring it in, say save, and save again. And now when we expand the menu, it's here at the bottom, and we can drag this onto, you see that there are two different slots that we can put it in for each dial. The top one is for when you rotate. So that's where we'll drop this one. And if we wanted to, we could drop a push action from one of the earlier ones we did up here onto this slot. So when you push the dial, it will perform that action. But for now, this will rotate from one node to the next, forwards and backwards on this dial. So if we switch over to DaVinci, go over to the color room, swipe to the next dial strip, and you'll see our new key has been added there. I'll select a shot that has a couple of different nodes, and now when we rotate, we can go back and forth between the two nodes. Once again, very easy to modify and build your own profile to your own workflow. As always, follow us on Twitter, join our mailing list. That's the way we make announcements for new products and updates to existing products because our, our updates are always free. If you bought a product before, you'll always get the new update. Thanks for watching, thanks for supporting us, and we'll talk to you next time.